you know, I don't want to sound too much like a chauvinist, but when I come home and dinner's not ready, I go through the roof, okay? Donald Trump's misogyny is obvious. It's part of his brand. It's one of the reasons why he's so famous in the first place. And I'd argue that nearly everybody already knows it. But while some perceive Trump's sexism as horrifying or dangerous, millions of others don't really think it's that big of a deal. It's the difference between seeing Trump like this versus something more like this. Fire her and don't ever make me talk to a woman that old again. And that rather stark difference in perspective is, I think, at the heart of why Trump's sexism didn't derail his bid for the White House in the way that most political pundits predicted that it would. Now, we'll return to our friend Jack from 30 Rock in a moment. We have a chance to make this country great again. But first, we have to talk about how the next president of the United States views women. I see. So you treat women with respect. Uh, I can't say that either. All right, good, all right. It's not an exaggeration to say that Donald Trump sees women as pieces of meat who primarily exist for male pleasure or as trophies to elevate men's social status. This mentality even extends to his own daughters. I've said that if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. You know? <laughs> Stop it! Oh, it's so weird! <laughs> he projects a casual disregard for the idea of consent. I'll go backstage before a show. Yes. And everyone's getting dressed and ready. And I'm allowed to go in because I'm the owner of the pageant and therefore I'm inspecting it. Is everyone okay? You know, they're <laughs> yeah. standing there with no clothes. Is everybody okay? And you see these incredible looking women. And so I sort of get away with things like that. She was one of the most beautiful women I had ever seen. It was incredible. This is a man who incessantly links the inherent worth of women to their physical appearance and to little else. Now, all of a sudden, she's gained. I mean, literally, she went up from about 118 to about 170 pounds. It was incredible. Well, obviously, it's great outer beauty. I mean, we could say politically correct that the look doesn't matter, but the look obviously matters. Like, you wouldn't have your job if you weren't beautiful. All of this is, again, obvious and uncontroversial. So what's going on in our culture when a man can say things like this? You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the pussy. <laughs> I can do anything. And then millions of Americans, both men and women, just shrug it off and support him anyway. Now, I don't think the 60 million people who voted for Donald Trump did so because they agree with his sexist behavior, at least not consciously. Sure, some certainly do, but the vast majority don't. Most people are not internet trolls. During the 2016 election cycle, we saw dozens of Republican leaders trying to distance themselves from Trump's misogyny. Yet for most of them, it still wasn't a deal breaker. So we have to ask why? Why wasn't such blatant and unashamed misogyny a deal breaker? The answer, I'd argue, has a lot to do with the ways that our culture normalizes sexism. In the sociological sense, normalization is the process by which a particular attitude, ideology, or behavior becomes established and entrenched in social life. It's the cultural process through which we come to expect and accept something as natural and as well, normal. The cultural process of normalization is, of course, multifaceted. It operates within many different institutions simultaneously. In families and schools, in workplaces and churches, in government and entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump. But it's that last one, entertainment, that I want to focus on here. On the ways in which mass media frames misogyny and sexism, because, as Bell Hooks says, pop culture is where the pedagogy is. It's where the learning is happening. Donald Trump is a reality TV star. He is, first and foremost, an entertainer. He revels in making a spectacle of himself in a society that rewards him with endless media attention nice set of hair, I'll say that. for his outlandish behavior. It's clear to me that Donald Trump is always performing, always putting on a show for an audience. And his overt sexism is an important part of that performance. We get along very well, and there's not a lot of disagreement, because ultimately, Ivana does exactly as I tell her to do. 
You see, wait a minute. Man I'm gonna shove in it. <laughs> right, right, men. Is that right? Huh? In fact, Trump's brand of misogyny is so unapologetically over the top that it feels very much like a television caricature. Maybe I could help her realize some other life goal to become a doctor's nurse or a lawyer's mistress or even the president of the United States Shopping Association. I want you to get better because, and I mean this, I'm tired of talking this much to a woman I'm not having sex with. This lovable misogynist archetype is found everywhere in pop culture. That's right, Barney Stinson is back on the market. Mothers, lock up your daughters. Ted, the only reason to wait a month for sex is if the girl is 17 years, 11 months old. You have been sexually harassing me since the very first day of class. Sexually harassing? <laughs> what? That makes no sense to me. Why would I harass somebody who turns me on? There's the house. I found America's top models. <laughs> are you sure? Look, on the roof, Anais and Giselle are sunbathing. European style. <laughs> You can recognize people on Google Earth? Of course not. I got a buddy of mine at NORAD to have a spy drone fly over. <laughs> the thing about Jack Donahue from 30 Rock and the many other characters just like him is that everybody knows they're sexist. The characters know it, the show knows it, the audience knows it. Across the board, these characters engage in outlandishly sexist and sometimes downright misogynist behaviors. What did I do? You don't know? Oh, you poor dear. Your ovaries are squirting so much goofy juice into your brains, you don't even know which way is up. Is there a little something going with one of the girls here? Maybe it's that Russian dancer with the tattoos, which is the crazy sex trifecta. Wide-eyed farm girl would get off the bus with big dreams of Broadway. And no idea what a casting director could legally ask her to do, hold, or lick during an audition. But at the end of the day, they're still framed as lovable, well-meaning guys. An amazing guy. He's fun, and one of my best friends, and he landed this hottie. He's a good guy. By the end of each episode, all has been forgiven again. But no life lessons have really been learned. And it is on. For these characters, sexism is never presented as serious enough to permanently jeopardize their friendships, or their relationships, or their jobs. In other words, no. it's not a deal breaker. This is one of the ways that our culture works to normalize sexist behavior. Not by denying that it's sexist, but by acknowledging it and then framing it as mostly harmless. Hey, for the record, what you guys are doing is really creepy. You know what, if it's creepy to use the internet, military satellites, and robot aircraft to find a house full of gorgeous young models so that I can drop in on them unexpectedly, then fine, I'm creepy. It's a younger man's game, Lemon. But I can't say that I don't miss it. You'd be in your office late at night. The new girl would come in with some flimsy excuse to be there. Oh, Mr. Donaghy, I forgot to give you the factory worker death rates. And she'd laugh at your lame joke, touch of the arm. And you take your reward. Now to be clear, I don't believe the writers and producers of this media are intending to help normalize sexism. I think they clearly intend to satirize it. But when misogyny is consistently framed as a lighthearted joke, it signals to viewers that sexism isn't something all that serious. I'd argue that this provides us with a clue as to why Donald Trump's misogyny isn't taken seriously either. If we add a laugh track after Trump's statements about women, he becomes virtually indistinguishable from another TV sitcom character. I don't want to sound too much like a chauvinist, but when I come home and dinner's not ready, I go through the roof. <laughs> but in all honesty, we don't need to add a laugh track because Trump's audience provides one for him already. And he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee it. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just like a TV show. I think we have to face the hard truth that for millions of people, Donald Trump's sexism is not seen as harmful because it's seen as just more entertainment. Trump excels at exploiting a media landscape where misogyny is framed as just guys being guys, and as something that doesn't make those guys dangerous or scary. 
when Trump or his surrogates are occasionally forced to respond to his most egregious sexism, they do it like this. This was locker room talk. Notice that statements about locker room talk are not a denial of sexism. They're an excuse for it. They're an acknowledgement that yes, Trump's statements may be sexist, but it's mostly harmless. It's just not that big of a deal. But of course, misogyny is that big of a deal. Misogyny is dangerous, especially to women on both an interpersonal and a public policy level. And Trump's presidency promises to bring with it an attack on women's reproductive rights and a dismantling of protections against gender-based discrimination. Do you believe in punishment for abortion, yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah. The important thing to understand is that Trump and his brand of toxic masculinity do not exist in a vacuum. He doesn't exist separate and apart from the world that you and I inhabit. His rise comes in part because we have failed to challenge a culture that tolerates sexist behaviors even while acknowledging that they exist. Donald J. Trump might be a misogynist, but in a society that reduces sexism to a joke, he's widely seen as a lovable one. So if you enjoyed that video, please consider sharing it. Uh, you can also go over to my Patreon page right here and help back the project. Even just a few dollars a month uh, really helps me out a lot. Um, I will see you all in a few weeks with another video critique.